your your son uh, also was very involved in the movement, and as I understand it, uh, in was it 1958 he was coming back from from yes, Howard from Law School yeah. and stopped uh, in, Richmond, in Richmond, Virginia, Virginia. Mm -hmm. and, and asked to have uh, food from a sandwich and a, and a cup of coffee from a white the white side of the lunch counter. Yes, because in the black side they had the black side. He said that it was crowded, smoky, and people were talking loud. And he had just a short while before he had to catch the bus. And there were so many people to be waited on. He said he really didn't intend doing what he did, but he did it. And he said, I know what I'll do. I'll just step over here on the white side and ask him to give me a cup of coffee and a sandwich. And what made him so angry was when the... Um, the manager came out and said, we don't serve niggers in here. And he told them, I don't eat niggers either. <laughs> but anyway, he went on back, and before they gave him that, he called the officers and they threw him in jail. He didn't tell us about it. He called the um, uh, Howard University Law School professor and told him. They told him, just stay there. Don't leave. Uh, we are going to get you out. Stay there overnight. And of course he stayed, spent the night in jail. And they got him out. That was one of the last cases, I think, that Thurgood Marshall, one of, you know, to the Supreme Court, that Thurgood Marshall had before he became a member of the uh, Supreme Court. And it, and it, was very instrumental in terms of the desegregation of, of lunch counters. Oh, yes. It did away with segregation and lunch counters and interstate travel. You must uh, have been very proud of him. Oh, yes. I'm very proud of him. It's sort of, it's, is it genetic? What is it? Was, uh, <laughs> it must be. It must be. Because my granddaughter, she has so much of me in her. But I'm very, very proud of her. Very proud. Watch out. <laughs> Watch out. Uh-oh. <laughs>